This is a painting that I created based on a photograph by Scott Stulberg, and I created it using the new brushes in a new brush category that I created, Artistry Corel Painter Brushes 2. And I thought I would show you some of these brushes in action. I'm going to start with this edges color. I'm going to zoom up on the image by dragging clockwise on the radial dial on my Wacom tablet. I'm pressing the space bar and clicking and dragging to maneuver in the painting. This edges color brush that I created will create a little bit of soft texture on edges and I'm pressing Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, and clicking in the image to pick up a color. Then I'm painting. And it's a way to soften the edges to give the painting a more painted look. With crisper edges, the painting looks more like a photograph. Then all of these texture brushes are various brushes that I created for background texture, and I'll give you a little quick demo of each one. So you can see it paints with some interesting texture. Some of them have more texture than others. This is a little bit more subtle than the previous ones. But if you like a subtle texture in the background, then you'll use these brushes. And of course, you use them in combination with each other to get various results. This last one has some interesting variations in strokes. So you can see how combining them gives you some very cool texture. And that's not all. Now the Edges Blender is the same thing as the Edges Color, except the Edges Color paints with color and the Edges Blender doesn't. So you can use the Edges Blender to blend with some soft brush strokes to maybe smooth out some of the texture. Giving you even more variation in the background. This new Impressionist One brush is good for painting hair. If I press lightly on the stylus, I get a smooth stroke. And if I press heavily, I get a textured stroke. So it's a nice way to get some varied texture in the hair. Then I can go back in to my Edges Blender and blend what I just did. A shortcut for changing the width of the brush is to hold down Option-Command on Mac, Alt-Control on Windows, and to click and drag in the image. So I'm going to do that from now on, and you'll know what I'm doing.
So if I press lightly, I get a softer result. And if I press heavily, I get a textured result. I am painting in a clone, and I do have a source image attached to this image, so I'm going to press Command on Mac, Control on Windows, and type a T to turn on tracing paper so that I can see where I want to add my brush strokes. I'm going to go to the New Impressionist cloner. This brush does the same thing, only it picks up color from the source. What I did was I clicked the reset tool in the property bar to make sure that I'm using the brush's original settings. Turn on the tracing paper to see what is in the source and then paint. So the brush picks up color from the source image and paints with this nice texture. This new Impressionist 2 brush is similar. It also paints with texture. But what it does is it paints with the colors that I have chosen in the color panel. And if I press lightly, it paints with the background color or this maroon. And if I press heavily, it paints with the front circle or this gold. So it's a way to get color and texture in the strokes. Which lends itself to a very painterly result. If you look at traditional oil paintings, they will have multiple colors and brush strokes like this in the background. The New Impressionist 3 brush is a similar idea, only it has texture in the strokes. And you can choose a paper texture like the simulated wood grain for very textury strokes. Here is a New Impressionist Blender, which is the same thing as the New Impressionist 2, only this New Impressionist 2 paints with color and this New Impressionist 2 Blender doesn't. So I can go into the Blender and blend out some of the texture and leave some of the texture by painting with the Blender. This Impressionist 3 Grainy Cloner is the same thing as the previous Impressionist 3 Grainy Brush, only it picks up color from the source. And I'll go over and paint in the hair. And again, it gives me a very nice textured result, giving you an Impressionist looking painting. The Strokey Blender, Cloner, and Strokey Brush all paint with brush strokes. 
for another kind of textured look. With this brush, when you first paint, it puts down color from the color panel, and then the more that you continue to paint, it picks up and blends with the color already in the image. Another kind of texture. The Edges Cloner gives you the same result as the Edges Color, picking up colors from the source. So it's a little bit more subtle than the other brushes. I can go back into the basic paper for an even smoother result. This leaves brush is fun, again, just for texture. And what it does, I'm going to pick up color from the image, make this brush a little bigger, and it just puts down some texture. I called it leaves because if you're painting backgrounds, they could look like leaves. But it's a nice way to get a very textured look. The New Impressionist 1 Blender and the New Impressionist 2 Blender paint in the same way as the brushes, only they blend. And last but not least, I threw in a Smooth Blender. And you can use the Smooth Blender to completely blend out everything, which would be kind of a shame because you have some nice textures going on in here. But what it's really useful for is for painting the skin. So you can paint all of those textures in the background and in the hair and then have smooth skin. You can also blend some of the textures. If this gets a little too textury for you, you can always blend some of the texture away. So that's a quick look at the new Artistry Corel Painter Brushes Volume 2. Thanks for watching. The Artistry Corel Painter Brushes Volume 2 are available at the Artistry website, artistrymag.com.